Hey everyone, uh, I'm Max Lynch, one of the contributors and uh, project managers of the Angular Material Project. I'm also one of the co-creators of the Ionic Framework, which I think you heard a little bit about today. Um, yeah. All right. I'm Thomas Burwell. <laughs> <laughs> that does de deserve a clap. I love Merci. that. Merci. I'm Thomas Burleson. I'm a software architect and the team lead for Angular Material Project. Oh. So. <laughs> so that's me, right? Yeah. So, um, so where were we? There we go. So, so what is Angular, what is material design? I'm sure you all have heard of material design. It was recently announced this past summer at Google I.O. And material design is a visual design language that provides a specification for innovative UI controls, user experiences, and styles that are consistent across multiple devices and multiple screen sizes. And so we're going to attempt to show that to you in a few moments with Angular. Right, and uh, whoops, go down. Um, I'm sure you've all heard of uh, Polymer Paper, which is a uh, reference implementation of material design for Polymer and also Android, uh, Android Lollipop, which is another reference implementation of material design for native Android apps. Well, we wanted to build a reference implementation of material design for uh, AngularJS apps. So all you Angular developers could get uh, Angular native components that use material design and worked in the broadest number of uh, modern browsers available today. Uh, so that's what we built. Um, so, Brad and Naomi over at uh, AngularJS team uh, approached us at the Ionic, uh, on the Ionic team uh, because we had experience building UI frameworks on top of Angular and also uh, amassed a great team of uh, both core Angular developers and community developers to make this happen. Right, so we wanted to present to you the Angular Material team that we see on the slide here. And obviously there's, there should be some familiar faces. So we have Brad and Igor and Naomi and Brian Ford, and of course Matthias, who are all, I'm sure, familiar to the Angular community. And then we have the, the excellent development skills and experience for the Ionic team of Max, Andrew, and Adam. Right, and we've also got, uh, we've got Marcy, who's been handling all of the accessibility. We have Matthias, who's doing great animation stuff. Both of them are talking. Uh, definitely uh, be here for their talks. Right, and then we have Rob Eisenberg, who's also helping not only on the Angular Material Project, but on Angular 2.0 routing, which provides a real synergy between the Angular 2.0 efforts that are coming up in the, near, in the future and the current efforts going on with Angular Material. Right, so just a side note, <clears throat> uh, with the core Angular team members on this project, we've been able to influence uh, Angular 2.0, which is really exciting, and also make sure that we're doing things in a way that will work uh, for the future of Angular. So. Right, and I would be remiss if I didn't also introduce Ryan, who has been working very hard on some theming that we'll talk about a little bit later on. So we have a, some really innovative and super cool features we want to show to you today. Okay. So before we could, we talked about why Angular Material and the initiative that got that going, and we, now we're getting ready to talk about the what. What is Angular Material? But to properly set the stage, let's talk about Let's back up for a moment and talk about AngularJS. So AngularJS gives us all the syntactic sugar and this magic that we all know for dependency injection, services such as $HTTP, Angular modules. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Data binding, mm -hmm. uh, core directives, animation and effects, and also components that are data aware with your data model. Right, so we take all of these features and layers within AngularJS, and on top of that, we then layer Angular material. And Angular Material brings an additional very rich set of rich UI components, services to assist and augment those components, uh, very interesting and engaging ink effects and user experience effects that we'll show in a few minutes, ARIA support for accessibility, and we'll talk about that in a few moments. Uh, then we get this, we're going to be talking, this is a section favorite to our hearts, is layout for CSS which is incredibly important when you're talking about not only use, implementing components, but how you use them within an application. And then finally, we're going to be talking a little bit about themes. Great. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> so let's jump in and actually go through a demo. Uh, all this stuff is avail available online. So if you're lucky enough to be able to get on the Wi-Fi, uh, go to uh, material.angularjs.org so you can follow along at home. 
Right, so what you're seeing on this slide here is that not only is the source code available on GitHub in the Angular organization, but it's also, uh, we have the Bower install we'll talk about in a few minutes, and then we're gonna be showing our online documentation, which is generated live from our source code. Gen doc, uh, demos generated live, embedded live, API generated live. So we're eating our own dog food here. And it's delicious. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> Told him not to do that. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's. He really didn't want me to do that. Let's forget that ever happened. And, uh, so, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Uh, hopefully it still works, it's very responsive. Uh, so this is the demos page. Um, basically, uh, it has the API reference for how to use Angular Material, along with uh, all, all the demo, demos for the components that I'll talk about in a second, and also our layout system, which is a personal favorite of mine. And then, of course, we, when we talk about demos in an online system, we also have our API. Would you mind collapsing that just for a moment? So when we talk about our API, we're really talking about our services and directives, and we'll show those in just a few minutes. But first, let's dive into some demos where you can see live these components, and we'll talk about that. All this is available. You can play with it right now. Right, right, right. So let's start with buttons. Like, this is a basic component. Uh, every, everyone needs buttons, and we have tons of them. Um, and, you know, they, they look pretty simple, but when you click on them, like, they do that cool ink ripple effect. Right, you, uh, you could use the button tag and you could create your own button. The challenge becomes when you want to implement some of these ink effects and you want to start supporting ARIA features, accessibility features. So when we start presenting these components, always think about that, that under the hood we're managing the complexities of inks, user interactions, swipes that you'll hear about in a few minutes, and ARIA. Right, so every demo here has a little source button uh, and it drops down and you can see how to actually use the component. Um, so for this example, all you need to do, uh, and I'm sorry if it's too small, but all you need to do is use md-button. Right, and if you don't want an ink effect, obviously we support attributes right here. So a no ink or the disabled. Or disabled, yeah. All this stuff is pretty core HTML5 properties that you already know. It just works. Uh, so some of these demos also have JavaScript and CSS. This one doesn't, but you can click through to see those. Uh, so buttons are pretty basic. Um, one of my favorites is the subheader uh, component. And basically, this is a, uh, uh, a component that demos the cool scroll effects in uh, NG Material, uh, where if you scroll, you know, you have different subheaders that kind of come up and become like the, the, the header, the sticky header, essentially. Right, so imagine trying to implement it yourself, this yourself. You could, but it's a fair amount of work. In fact, we've rewritten this twice. In <laughs> fact, most of the components we've rewritten twice because we wanted to really strive for, per, for um, not only clarity of code, but performance. I think all the ones that I wrote got rewritten. Oh, same here, <laughs> same ones for mine. All, the developers tend to re re rewrite and refactor our code. <laughs> but uh, this, is inc this is really, would be challenging to do. Imagine creating a sticky header that sticks to its parent content, but knows how to gently move out of the way when another sticky header shoves it away, out of the way. Right, and if we look at the source, all you have to do is use md-subheader and that will automatically just work with the scrolling. It'll fix to the top. Very, very easy to do. I think this, this really shows the power of having directives that are really simple to use as the end user, but have a lot of functionality underneath that you don't really need to care about. It just works. Um, so subheader is a great one. Uh, side nav is, is one that kind of starts to show the responsive approach that we've taken uh, in engine materials. So uh, if I can actually, we could even show for here, if you click on the toggle right, Obviously, we can have side nads that come in more of a, more of a desktop type application. But side nads can be locked open or hide and shown. But the real power comes when we're looking at responsiveness. Right, so side nads like, don't always make sense to the desktop when they're hidden and you toggle. Uh, so you can do these cool uh, responsive effects where it's locked open until it gets too small. And then it's uh, stuck on the side and you can open it programmatically uh, just like you would with any other control. No, um, notice that the sidebar for the actual online documentation auto hid. So again, we're showing that we actually use all of our components within our documentation, right, within right. our solution. Here. So this is a very cool responsive component, very simple to use. Um, one that's really quite complicated that's uh, very impressive is the, uh, uh, the tabs directive. Yes, it seems like everyone wants to use tabs. Right? But there's so much complexity to a tab because some people want tab buttons only, some people want tabs with managed content, sometimes you have external content. What do you do about pagination? What do you do about focusing? How do you handle swipe? Things like this. All of that is built into this. Right. And in fact, we have two demos here, one that shows how you can statically create tabs, 
one how you can dynamically do it with ng repeat. Right, so taking a look at this demo down here, it actually shows the pagination uh, where we have 10 different tab items and they automatically flow. Like, you know, everyone wants to add tons of tabs, but they end up getting scrunched. So having pagination is just a really simple way to have lots of tabs, um, but still make it fluid for the end user. Right, and the thing that's interesting about these is the animations. So often animations look pretty good when you're doing JavaScript and they look good on desktop. But then you go to mobile and you get weird lagging effects, et cetera. We've invested significant effort in our components to have them work well on mobile. Right, and, and you'll notice that I'm using the keyboard here to just kind of key through uh, different tabs. This shows how uh, we've invested a lot of time adding accessibility features to all these components, uh, where you can, you can drive them completely with the keyboard uh, if, you, if you wish. And you don't have to do anything. You get all that for free. And all of these components are data aware, which means you can have a data source and do data binding, feed in a new list or feed in new attribute changes, and they will just automatically respond. Right, so some of these examples have ng repeat for the tabs. Uh, they'll use a ng model uh, or a, a data bound uh, model to set the selected index. Very natural for an Angular developer. Perhaps we could show the linear one, would you mind? This one? So uh, these were actually fairly challenging. Uh, if you take a look at the source for these, the, the CSS is really challenging to do. So we've t invested the effort to implement some of the progress bars, circular ones and indeterminate progress bars and indeterminate ones. And if we look at the source, you're going to see how easy it is to use some of these. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's a really cool one. Uh, but forms are really something that I think is pretty special mm -hmm. in this project. Uh, there's a lot of great form controls. They have tons of rich accessibility features. Um, but this is one that, that's my personal favorite. It's the floating label pattern. Um, so uh, placeholders in inputs have become really popular. They're very clean. They look good. But unfortunately, as soon as the user focuses and starts typing, they completely forgot what they were actually typing because the label's gone. Uh, so floating labels help solve this problem. Uh, you still have the label there. It, it went up. It's now focused. You know what you're, what you're looking at. Uh, it's very, very helpful. And in fact, this component not only handles the transitions and the coloring, but it supports the theming we're going to talk about in a moment. And it supports different in input types. So you could use email, password, number input types. It's automatically there. And in fact, as you show the source, again, it's incredibly easy to do this. This is an MD text float. You provide a label and a, and a model, or even a dynamic, dynamically bind the label. So very easy to use. Right. Uh, we have, uh, for other form elements, we have uh, radio buttons. Um, so you can have full radio support. They have uh, support for groups, uh, support for keyboard interactions. So you can use the keyboard. Um, it looks good. It, it works great. Right. The groups are really, um, uh, I find a lot of value in the groups because it means you can have multiple groups of radio uh, controls within a form, and each one has its own data bound value for the selection. Yep. Uh, Checkboxes are very similar. Uh, won't spend too much time on them, but they work really well. They have cool little animation effects, ink ripple effects. Um, so basically, you have tons of components uh, that you can use to put together great uh, applications. Um, and, and each one of these components is, is wonderful, but they're really nothing without a strong layout system. But before we go to the layout, why don't we just temporarily back up and take a look at the, the API and how we navigate back and forth between the two. Right. So before we get to the layouts, I'm very eager to do that, uh, we can go and check out the, uh, the API reference, which is being stubborn. Um, basically, every kind of parameter or attribute or property uh, of each component that you can configure is documented here. Um, and if you want to see a demo, you can just easily click View Demo, and it goes right to the appropriate demo on the page. And you can go back to the API by, again, kick, clicking on the API link in the upper right. Right. And all of this is dynamically built from the code. So it's always up to date. The code is like the, the reference for everything. Um, so it's very helpful. Awesome. Cool. So let's talk about layouts, because that's my favorite part. <laughs> uh, so we've uh, basically built a, I think, pretty, pretty innovative layout system in uh, that uses Flexbox. And the cool thing about this is if you've ever used Flexbox, you know that it can be really hard to use. You have all these different kind of generations that you have to support in different browsers that have different you know, prefixing. Uh, the, the language to use Flexbox is pretty obscure as it is. It doesn't really always uh, make intuitive sense, like what's going on. 
Uh, so we wanted to make this easier because part of material design is this uh, intense focus on key lines as the way to help you uh, uh, align all of your you know, important regions of your app uh, because that gives context to the user. It helps them understand how your app works. It creates meaning for yes. via the layout. That's the word, meaning. So uh, we wanted to make this really, really easy for you and also make it responsive. So we have a totally responsive Flexbox-driven grid uh, that doesn't actually require you to write any CSS. It's all attribute driven. Right, so if you've been intimidated by trying to learn Flexbox and avoided that and then tried to manually put in the layouts and padding and all that you needed for desktop and then saw that it wouldn't work on mobile, well, now we have the CSS layout and it's incredibly easy to use. Right, so let's take a look at some of these examples. Um, <clears throat> let's, let's mention that these examples are not pictures. These are actual DOM layouts that are actually using the layout attributes. Right, right. So if we want to do a uh, row-based layout, all we would have to do is do div layout equals horizontal, and you'll get a uh, row-based layout for free. Um, and not only that, it'll be responsive. It'll have support for gutters, which is historically difficult to do with Flexbox. And padding. And padding. And it'll all pretty much just work and be responsive. Uh, so that's very, very helpful hopefully gets you to use Flexbox, because Flexbox is really great when it works. The thing that I love is the alignment stuff on the, for the... Yes, yeah, so, so that's the grid, that's like, you know, the core grid, but the cool, like one of the really great things is the alignment system. So I'm sure if you've ever written CSS, vertical alignment is like number one most annoying thing to do. Uh, and Flexbox makes it really, really easy. And I don't think people always realize that, because how you actually do it doesn't really make any sense. Uh, so we tried to make this way easier to do, uh, where you could do things like vertical alignment. Um, and all the source is available here for these, for all of these samples. Yep. So all you need to do is layout align center. And you can do center and center to do horizontal and vertical centering. Uh, and as we, as the page size changes, all this just kind of works perfectly. And you don't really have to do much. Yes. So uh, this will hopefully help you... Uh, you know, layout, make some interesting app layouts and not really bang your head over floats, you know, line heights, all that stuff we used to have to do. Now the interesting, the final thing I think to mention about this is that, it, can you show maybe this one right here, we'll just talk about that. So the layout here, we default to, to, to sort of a focus on mobile. And that means then that f unless you specify otherwise, the layout's gonna be, for mobile, is gonna be vertical or horizontal if you said layout horizontal. But then we allow you to add other attributes to say, when the screen device size is larger, then the layout can be different. So this is what we mean by mobile first for our layout stuff. And this, that thing is important to remember because when you're looking at the layout stuff, you maybe get confused by some of the usages. Just think mobile first and it makes complete sense. Click container elements, that has a great example. <laughs> oh, the, okay, the responsive layout. Uh, next example, right there. Uh, no, this page, scroll down a little bit, right there. Yeah, I'm, as, I'm down as far we gotta as we go. can go. Uh, we'll move on. Well, you can try to find that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's there somewhere. So uh, it's, it's, you can set easy, easily set breakpoints based on different screen sizes. Uh, everything is, is very natural. So uh, I personally think this is one of the things that people are going to love the most once they start to use it uh, because you'll find yourself like, you know, so happy to be using Flexbox and have it work and not have to do all those hacks we used to have to do. So. That's a little bit about the layout system. Awesome, this is cool. What's next? Uh, I believe we have a little bit of uh, We would be remiss if we didn't talk about ARIA. So ARIA stands for Accessibility for Rich Internet Applications. And when I think of ARIA, I know that Marcy, uh, who is giving a detailed presentation on this, will have a lot more information on this. But when I think of ARIA, I think of three primary things. Support for screen readers. So at each component level, support for screen readers. Keyboard navigation and focus support. And that's all built in to uh, each of our components. Right, and you saw me doing that before. Uh, historically, uh, a little bit difficult to do, so uh, all this stuff has been baked in. We spent a lot of time on it, and you benefit from that uh, essentially for free. So what do we have next? Oh, no, so, go down one. Sorry, go back and uh, this one. So uh, keep going down past the land. So finally, we had, so let's back up and review. We have rich components, we have CSS layout, and we have themes. Because we are in the final stages of, of preparing the themes for release, which will come out in the 0.5 within the next two weeks, we actually don't have themes ready to show you today. 
But themes are an incredibly powerful feature of Angular Material because it allows you to essentially use one attribute definition to, a, to assign a whole suite of color palettes that then get applied to the different aspects of all your components. It's incredibly easy to do, and it reduces all the pain of color and setting a theme that's uh, application-wide. So, right. And colors also convey meaning. Just like key lines convey meaning, colors with our themes convey meaning. Right, and, it, and then if you're a developer who's had to design something, uh, you know that it's hard to do, so you'll appreciate that. <laughs> so uh, go, moving on a little bit, let's talk about timeline, like where we are today, where we're going, um, and what's next. Right, so we're currently at a milestone of 0 0.4.2, I believe. And within the next two weeks, probably sooner than that, but within the next two weeks, we'll be at 0 0.5. This is a major milestone for us because we don't expect any more major breaking changes. So that, what that means is you guys should start using these components right very soon. If not now, then at 0.5. They're ready for to use and start playing with. Because after 0.5, we're on a sprint to fit, delivering it for a beta 1. So we want to have beta 1 before Q4 ends, so the quarter 4. And in our beta version 1, you're going to see the rest of the components that are currently missing implemented. Grid list, select, menu, excuse me, menu, and chips. I like chips. You want to talk about the swipe? Uh, he likes chips. Yeah, I like chips. Uh, <laughs> so uh, there's also going to be tons of support for uh, gesture-based uh, interactions, better swiping, dragging, panning. Right. So in fact, some of the components already support swiping, but we actually want to add more support for that, and especially for panning. Imagine being able to pan like you do with jQuery components, companing, or excuse me, panning um, tab content. Well, you'll be able to do that also with, and in fact, that's already available on the Ionic framework. So you'll have that also in the Angular material. We're going to have improved documentation. We'll have significantly improved and cool features with animations. And I highly encourage you not only to see Marcy's presentation on Aria, but Matthias' presentations, where he's going to sort of pull the rabbit out of the hat a little bit on animations. And we'll have more and more samples. Right, including a, a bigger application that will demonstrate a lot more of the complicated interactions be more of a reference implementation. Um, so in terms of how you can help us today, uh, we are really, really looking for your input. Um, all this stuff is available on GitHub right now. So if you go to the Angular org and type material, you'll find the material repo. Uh, it's totally open. Uh, we'd love to have you try it out. We, we want you to, we encourage you to experiment with these components. Put them in your own applications. Start stress testing them. We've already done our full set of stress testing, but we need your, your engagement and your input on how to make them even better. Right, and if you find something that doesn't work, which you know that happens every once in a while, uh, file an issue and uh, help us out. We try to be very responsive to user feedback and user issue reporting. We highly encourage you to provide a code pen or a plunker sample that makes it very easy for us to identify the issue and quickly resolve it for you. And also tell us what device slash browser you're testing in. Correct. And then, of course, finally, tell your friends. Tell them about Angular Material. It, it is a very important layer on top of AngularJS. And the team loves it. And um, I'm sure you will also. Uh, some more links. Uh, I already talked about GitHub page, github.com slash angular slash material. Um, there is a Bower library out if you like that kind of thing. Um, all you do is Bower install Bower dash material. There's also pending, coming very soon, is an NPM version of Angular Material to be installed via NPM. The docs is uh, material.angularjs.org. And then if you want to read the entire material design spec, go to google.com slash design. Now, the reason we put that up is the UX team at Google did a really amazing job of putting the, the specification together. And it has been fundamentally critical to how quickly we developed Angular Material. So when you want to see where we're going with extra features or why we've implemented something a certain way, take a look at the spec. It's very interesting, and it's, and it's a great read. And that's all we have. So hit, send us a tweet. Uh, I hate saying that word. A tweet. A tweet. A tweet. A tweet. <laughs> and if you have any questions, get us at the Q&A. Uh, Patrick, do we have time for one question? Sure. So does, we have time for one question. Uh, coming. <laughs> Once we once so the beta comes out, the, he wants to repeat the oh, question. Oh yeah, uh, so when's when's integration in Ionic coming? Um, once beta comes out, uh, we'll start to start to look into that. Unfortunately, Just we are question. out of time, but please come to the Q and A or find us out wandering around.
and we'll be glad to try to answer your questions. If we can't, we'll escalate it up to Brad or Naomi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.